27 verse 9 says now when much time was spent and when the selling was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed Paul admonished them said unto them sirs I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage not only of the lading and ship but also of our lives Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than, the, than those things which were spoken by Paul. You may be seated tonight in the house of the Lord. we got some more reading to do later on, but I just wanted to read them first. Wouldn't going to make you stand up for all the other reading, because I figured some would complain about it, like my brother made it. But uh, anyways... If, uh, if I could, just a few minutes tonight, just Lord laid this thought on my heart in, in Sunday school actually this morning and uh, got to studying on it. And if I could get it off my heart tonight and deliver it to you and title this message, it would be Ride Out the Storm. Ride Out the Storm. Come on. <clears throat> we know in this passage of scripture that I just read, the first starting off, uh, Paul is. Uh, boarding a ship to go to where the Lord has called him to go to a place uh, that he was called to be. And he tells them, as we read here before, that, before, I mean, in these first few verses, he sees that the storm, that the, that the sea is going to be very contrary to the trip. Yeah. He sees that it's going to cause right. problems for them as they are selling, and he tells them that, uh, that they ought not be selling. They don't need to be going on this right. trip. It could be in danger of our lives. It could destroy the ship. Come not on. only could it destroy the ship, but it could destroy our lives. It could kill us. And it says that they, he did not listen to what Paul had to say. The centurion, uh, he went rather on what the, what the master, what the owner of the ship said. He said sell. So we know that they said sell. Amen. I thought many times, uh, you know, we, we, we have storms, uh, so to speak, that we go through. I know not all of them. We don't sail on a, on a daily basis. We don't get on a ship and sail across the sea. But we have storms in our life, Brother Paul. Uh, most thing we have to do is drive in the rain. And people don't know how to drive in the rain as it is. Amen. If you start screaming, the first thing they're going to do is throw their flashers on them. Amen. But we don't have to sail in rough seas. We don't have to get out and 
sail in, in rough terrain or anything like that, but we do have storms in our life uh, that we are facing. Amen. Here, here in this passage of Scripture, Paul was pretty much forced upon this storm that he had to sail in because he told them that he would rather not, that we ought to not to. Amen. I thought many times maybe we didn't put ourselves in the storm that we're going through, but we have been placed there. And we don't have a choice but to no. sail through it. Amen. Amen. Maybe we didn't cause ourselves the storm that we're in. Maybe we didn't physically put ourselves in the position that we're in. Oh. But hey, we oh. must sail on through it anyhow. Yeah. Amen. They told Paul, we don't we ain't gonna listen to what you have to say. We ain't gonna stay, but we're gonna sail. So right. Paul said, Have it your way, we will sail. And he, he didn't put himself there. He didn't ask to be there, but he had to go. He didn't have a choice because he was following what the Lord had told him to do. Amen. 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 Maybe you didn't put yourself or get yourself in the storm that you're currently facing, but you still must sail through the storm in order to make it. Dropping on down in verse 14, it says, But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurachlodon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which was called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat. Amen. As we see here, they get caught, in there and, I, and I didn't have much time, but I read back there in the commentary on the verse 14 there, it, uh, the wind, the, the, I guess this is how we started naming our storms. I don't know. Storms have been being named way back. Right. Even in Paul's day, they named the, the storm Eurachia. And I, and, I, and I read about it just a few minutes back there that I had time and it said it was sort of kind of like the same storm that John and him would have been in on, on their trip uh, when he uh, disobeyed God, but uh, Paul was obeying God. So you see here, it doesn't matter. I mean, it could be, even though we are doing what the Lord says we need to do, there still may be a storm grew up in your life. Oh. There's still going to be things that you have to go through. Oh. Amen. The exact same storm that a drone was facing because he was running away from God. It's the same storm that Paul and these people were in because Paul was following the Lord and doing what he had, what he was telling him to do. Amen. It was bad. It was it was tossing the ship. The ship was caught in and could not bear up. Amen. They just let her sail. Yeah. Amen. It says uh, uh, when the ship was caught, we could not bear it up. We couldn't keep it in the wind. We couldn't keep it going. So we just let it do what it had to do. We just let it sail, basically. We just let it drive on in to the storm. We just let it go. Amen. Times in your life. I don't care. I can't help it. It's not my fault. It may not be your fault. It's not the Lord's fault. Whatever you're going through, it's not time to say, well, let's just jump overboard. Or let's just give up the ship. Let's just sail a while. We got a storm. It was caught up. We couldn't bear, bear up into the wind. And we let it drive. 16 says, And running under a certain island, which is called Claudium, we have much work to come by the boat. This, this, the, 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 the storm has now tore up the ship. And it's on an island. It has pushed it up on this island, Claudium. And the ship is torn all to pieces. They got much work to do to the ship. So what do they do? They start working on the ship. They start doing what they can to the ship to get it back ready to sail again. They did. Come on. They go. The, the, listen, the ship has been damaged. Yeah. yeah. You have been damaged. But when he got when they washed it up, they came down here and they began to work. They began to put that ship back together on, so we can get back to selling. Oh, you got on the car. Oh, let me tell you. I've been come tossed. On. I've been beaten. I've been torn. The ship is torn. It's tearing me apart. It's taking me down. Well, let me tell you. Oh, you must make it through to the other side. Just because you 
You pray and you read. Oh, Lord. Not again. I'm going to pray and you read. Come on. Come on. That's right. Bailey got back and we got back in the vehicle leaving Tuesday tonight. She said, boy, he sure was tearing me up. I said, baby, he was tearing me up too. Come on. I was reading and praying. Right. Amen. Well, I got, I got beat down this week by the storm. Maybe I just won't read. Well, that's not building back. Right. That's for the more doing more damage. Come on, right. preach. No, I was going to I said, I know what preachers say it all the time. When you, it's not just preaching to you, preaching to me. Right. I said, but man, it is true. Yeah. And it's so tough. Yeah. Yes, I know, Brother Paul. We get beat down. Oh, man. It's been a week. It's been a day. It's been a year. It's Come been on, a man. lifetime. Preach. Whatever it's been. Come on. Come on. But that don't mean that we ain't got work to do. That don't mean that there's not work that could be done. That don't mean that the storm is over. Hey, man, that storm is still going to be right out there. Hallelujah. And you still will have to press through. And you still will have to sell on. And you still will have to push through. You still have to horse. I don't know nothing about selling. But you you still have to horse and catch the wind. You have to have somebody helping you. I don't know who was selling. But uh, you will have to tell him to steer. You will have to steer. You will have to catch the wind. But I tell you what you got to do. There ain't no giving up in it. There ain't no saying I've been caught up. Situation that you're in. Come on, man. Amen. Yeah. 
Yeah. You cannot move forward. They wouldn't have been able to move forward Come on. if their boat would have been beached, if their boat would have been hung up on the right. sand. Amen. And if right. the tide went out, well, Paul, they'd have to wait for the tide to come back in. Right. Come on. I don't know how that works. I don't know how long it would have been, but it could have been long enough for Paul to miss out. Yeah, the real Paul. For Paul to miss out on what the Lord was calling him to do. For what the Lord was calling him to do. He said, I'm just going to get hung up right here and I'm going to stay a while. Come on, Paul. Well, don't be surprised if you miss out. Come on, Paul. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Don't be surprised Come on, if you miss a blessing, oh, if you miss a calling, right. if you miss Come somebody on. to witness to. That's right. Come on. If you That's miss right. something because you are just content with being hung up in this situation. Yeah. Because you're content with staying where you are. Don't be surprised if you miss out. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, they straight sail and so were driven. Come on. Verse 18. This is where you're not going to like this part. I don't know if you've liked any of it so far. Verse 18. We being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lighten the ship. Woo! Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lighten the ship. Yeah. Come on. Right. 19. The third day, we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Oh my goodness. Come on. See, when they left, the storm was still there. Right. You're right. Now I'm still waiting on them. They still had to get through it. Come but on. they said, if we're going to make it, we got to get this thing a little bit lighter. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Some of this stuff we don't need. We got to get out. Come on. Some of this stuff that we're trying to sell to the other side Come on. for no reason. That ain't going to be in heaven when we get there. It ain't going to matter. It ain't going to be for nothing. We're carrying it on our ship. Bring our ship's getting beat. It's weighing us Bring down. It. But they said, let's lighten the load a little bit. Hallelujah. And these things that we don't need, this type of real need is, we ain't going to reach it. We got to get it on. We ain't going to know if that's what that is or not, but that's what it sounds like to me. They ain't worried about fishing. They got things that they need to do for the Lord. Hallelujah. You got things weighing you down. You got stuff on your ship that don't need to be there. Down. 
You can't sell like you need to. You can't sell like, like, you, like you ought to. You can't push through this storm. You can't push through the storm like you need to because you've got that stuff weighing you down. But I'm here to tell you tonight, hallelujah, yes, you may be in a storm. Yes, you may be selling. Yes, your boat may be torn apart, but you can't fix it. Hallelujah. You can't get back out in the water and you can't get rid of them things. That's so weighing you down. That's you think you need, but you don't need. I'm here to tell you tonight. Good. Hallelujah. Your ship can't sail tonight. Hallelujah. Come on. When neither the sun nor the star, stars in many days appear, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. All hope that we should be saved. I said, no, we, we couldn't even see that anymore. Hmm. It was gone. We couldn't see that we would be saved. They thought that they would die at sea. But thank God that he didn't make chapter 28 after verse 20. And that he wrote a verse 21. Because verse 21 says, But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them Come on. and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from creep and have gained this heart and, and to have gained this harm and lost. Verse 22 says, And now I exhort you to be a good cheer. Oh, oh. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. Oh. But of the ship. Right. Woo. Right. Just what do you think he done? Come on. Just what do you think he did? Oh man, what he said, but after long abstinence, Paul. Right. Come on. After what? Being away. Right. Taking Come some on. time. Come on. To be away. Come Just on. what do you think he was doing? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Just Come what on. do you think? He, do you think he was down in the bottom of the boat to shoveling water out? Saying, well, this is going to be the only way that we make it. This Come is going to be the only Come way on. that we make it. If I get this bucket and if I start scooping this water out, hallelujah, that should be the only way that we make it through this storm. No, I can guarantee it. One thing's for Come sure. On. When he left and went to his house,
He stepped out there and it come. Amen. But thank God, Paul knew how to get in touch with him. Oh, yeah. God. And when he said, whose I am and whom I serve, my God, don't you know that he was mindful? Oh, my yeah. God. Of Paul, don't you know he was mindful yeah. of the storm that they was in? What did he do? Did he cease the storm? No, he didn't. It didn't say that he cut the storm off. My God, but he did keep his protecting hand oh. upon Oh, you ain't gonna hear me tonight. I promise you, you're not hearing me. He didn't come. He didn't cut the storm out. He didn't take it away. But he did guarantee them that nothing, no harm. Oh, you got to have a machine. He said I would make it. 
He said we'd sail through. Amen. Brother, you just keep sailing this ship. You just keep holding it in the best you can do. I'm going to keep praying. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'm going to keep talking to God. I'm going to keep getting down to business back here. But as far as you know, we're going to make it to the land, yeah. to the island that we're supposed to go to. Because yeah. I believe what the Lord has told me. Hallelujah. You just keep sailing this ship, baby. We're going on. Oh. Hallelujah. I believe what oh. God, I believe what he told it to me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet tonight. Come on, man. If you was to keep on reading, they made it. They made it to the island. I tell you, well, the last, the last two verses here, 43 and 44. But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them for their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. But, it says, and so it came to pass that they all, that they escaped all safe to land. Amen. <laughs> it wasn't pretty the way they got there. Yeah. They got there, they was on the verge of all being taken into prison. They was on the verge of being caught up and being thrown in the bars. They said, but we got to land. Amen. We may Amen. have to float in on a piece of this ship we've been sailing on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Come on. Say, well, I just drifted up here on a piece of my ship. Come on. But I made it safe. Come on. I made it Woo. safe. Go. He didn't say it was going to be a bed of roses. He didn't say that it was going to be the best or easiest thing to do in the world, but he did promise them that they would that he would spare them. He did promise them that they would make it. Oh. It may not be pretty the way you get through it, but I'm telling you tonight, you must get through it. Whether you picked up on a piece of board or whether you dock your boat right on the dock oh. and you step off on the on the a board ball. It don't matter whichever way, but I'm telling you tonight that you must sail. You oh. must ride out and school tonight. It's no time to give up. How do you know what I thought? Hallelujah. This book right here was my grandfather's. Hallelujah. And I told him the other day, I just laid in the bed and cried. I miss him so much. And I did it preach this morning. Living with a longing. That man had a longing. Oh, my God. He had a longing to make it to heaven. Hallelujah. But you know what, Brother Paul? He rode out every storm that the Lord, either the Lord, the devil, life, it don't matter. He made up his mind. He said, I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, my God. When Mitchell died, it was a storm for both of them. But you know what? They both sailed on. They both sailed on. When they walked past, he sailed on. When I got hurt, he sailed on. My God, there's things that happened in that man's life. I never will know about it. Daddy may never know about it. Promise you one thing. I knew the man. I knew the way he lived. And I knew that he would sell on. No matter what. He ran out the storm. My God, I believe he's walking on the streets of gold this day. I got 
tonight's that kind. Amen. Let you find out we can't make it. 